everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Sleep Like a Boss podcast, where I'm welcoming Dr. Jane Levac. She is a naturopathic doctor based in Calgary, and she specializes in fertility. Um, so welcome to the show. Thank you, Aniga. I'm really excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you because, and, and people might be like fertility and sleep. What, why the heck is she inviting somebody to talk mm-hmm. about fertility? You know what? Um, I think one, because I actually see it in clients that when we work with them on their sleep, that they're like, you know what? I kind of, I'm thinking about having a baby. Is this the right time? I'm looking at their labs. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, maybe not yet. Your body seems like off. You're not sleeping. Um, and the other thing is a bit so um, self-centered, maybe that had I have a child and I'm not having another one, but had I known somebody like you before and had yep. I known these people existed, maybe my pregnancy would have been a lot less complicated. Um, and sure. I just think that information needs to get out and women need to hear that. And men too, because partners are involved in this, right? Absolutely. So uh, super excited to have you. And um, you've actually done this for about six years. And I think you've helped hundreds of couples already successfully conceiving. Yes which is exciting. No, it's, it's super exciting. And, you know, thank you for giving me the opportunity. It's funny because when I saw the invite to sleep like a boss and I was like, this goes perfectly with fertility. (laughs) Whereas I know that that's not what the general public thinks. And usually uh, we talked about this off camera, but like sleep is a skill and you need to learn how to sleep. And once you have children, you actually really realize that sleeping is a skill and we have to teach our kids how to sleep. That's the whole sleep training process. How you do it is going to vary depend on what you are comfortable with, but it is a skill that is essential in our adult life to learn how to do. And there's a lot of things that impact it nowadays. And so it's really unpacking that and understanding what's preventing you from being able to get a full deep sleep, <clears throat> excuse me, and feel rested uh, in the mornings, because that's a skill that you want to be able to pass on to your kids, because when they're babies, toddlers, you know, that is only going to get harder and harder to maintain. The same with things like exercise and good nutrition. Those things are just going to get harder and harder to maintain when you have a screaming child who's not sleeping, who is like literally taking all of your energy and your time. So really, really important to learn this skill before so you can prepare yourself for kind of the optimal pregnancy, but also postpartum and teach your children this very, very important skill. Yeah, that's actually a great point. I hadn't even made that connection, but absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, We do like the self-soothing and everything and calming down so important for, for kids to learn. And if we, if we don't, and we get triggered by certain things, we, we do pass that on for sure. Um, can we dive in? Where do you see the connection between sleep and fertility? Yeah, absolutely. So my big passion in kind of educating around fertility is your, and the, the fact that we're kind of seeing this really big decline in, in fertility. Mm -hmm. So you know, like if 20% of couples are having issues getting pregnant and they're predicting that number to go up to 50% in 2050. Now, predictions are predictions. Like, you know, you can't really tell like, sure, great. But all that's telling me is there's a trend in the wrong direction. So how do we reverse that? And what, what is that trend really about? And then you look at another trend that more and more of us are overweight, more and more of us are anxious and depressed and we need to be medicated. Our hormones are out of balance. So there's a generation of women that was just put on birth control and told there's no side effects. You can just keep taking it. Exactly. You can just keep taking it for forever. And I was part of that too. I remember being 15, 16 years old, told to go on birth control and I could be on it until menopause if I wanted to. And deep down, I was like, that's weird. That's not a normal thing to do and like just completely block that part of your health, (laughs) if you will. But many women, unfortunately, didn't have that flag go up. They were like, sweet, I don't have to worry about my period. And that's just a lack of education, right? And so now there's a lot of that coming through. Point being is the trend that we're seeing is that we're getting unhealthier. 
And so as society, as a population on earth, we're generally getting unhealthier. There is more and more autoimmune conditions. We're getting diagnosed with those conditions or chronic health conditions in general, like diabetes and cardiovascular disease, but even thyroid issues, being tired, being overweight, having irregular cycles or painful cycles or heavy cycles. Those things have just become the norm. Mm -hmm. And so then you look at the trend of infertility rates rising and you're like, I wonder if there's a connection. And there very much is, right? There's a very big connection about your overall health and your fertility potential. And that might be really hard to hear for some people because we will, our ego wants to protect us and you're like, but I'm healthy and I feel fine. And feeling fine and being healthy are two different things is what I'm learning in our day and age now. Because when you go to the doctor and your doctor is constantly saying, your blood work is normal, you're normal, you're normal. Even though you're coming in with a concern, you're saying, I'm tired or I can't lose weight or my digestion isn't working or like my period is off. And your doctor's like, nope, blood works look normal. Everything is great. It's that response that you're getting unvalidated and unheard every time you are just saying, okay, cool. I guess I am fine. I guess my messaging was off. But in reality, that's not true. It's the other way around, right? Like what does your doctor know who's seen you for 10 minutes, barely skimmed your blood work about how you feel every day, right? How do you, like my appointments are 90 minutes in the first initial consultation, 90 minutes where I talk about how are you sleeping? How much do you sleep? How much, right? And so it's a health assessment. And so the, you know, long story short here, the, one of the foundations of health is sleep. And if we're not sleeping well, it's really hard to line everything else up. And sometimes we're not sleeping well because our digestion is off and all these things, right? As you know, they're connected, but we got to get our sleep in order, in order to be able to fix anything else, right? To be able to make good choices when it comes to nutrition, to be able to good, make good choices when it comes to exercise and movement, to be able to regulate our mood and be present for our partner instead of, and our kids, our future kids, instead of being overwhelmed and anxious and depressed. And it all really does start with this foundation of learning the skill of how to sleep well and truly well, right? So you're going to bed, you're getting deep sleep and then you're waking up in the morning and you're feeling you're refreshed instead of hitting snooze 17 times and then drinking five cups of coffee throughout the day just to get through the day exactly and then potentially drinking that glass of wine at night to wind down because you're still fired up on that yeah caffeine sugar whatever yes. that was coming in throughout the day right it's because yeah. then it turns into this vicious cycle so um but if i'm not sleeping well Mm -hmm. um, how does that affect my fertility? Like, is my body actually not yep. producing sex hormones or yep. what is happening so that I can't get pregnant if I'm not sleeping well, where I'm super the, For sure. The biggest thing that happens is actually that cortisol dysregulation, mm -hmm. right? So cortisol is your stress hormone. And so when you don't sleep enough, your body automatically starts to produce more cortisol. It more cortisol means you're in this fight or flight state. When you're in a fight or flight state, your reproductive system tends to get shut down, especially if you're chronic in this state. So if you're, you know, quick stress, oh, I feel it. And then you come down versus when you're not sleeping well and you're not sleeping well for a long period of time, then it's this chronic state of fight or flight. And think about it, you're running away from a lion. Your body, the last thing your body is thinking about is, oh, I should reproduce and I should build a human. And what I talk about in fertility is pregnancy is the hardest thing that the body will, the female body will ever do. It is the hardest thing that the female body will ever go through. And so it's, it's a stress on the system. So we want to decrease the amount of stress that's on our system beforehand. We want to feel that our nervous system is soothed, that our nervous system is recharged and recovered. So then when you do get pregnant, you're able to handle that stress better. So when you're not sleeping well, the biggest thing is this cortisol is jacked up and then that dysregulates your blood sugars. So that also has a downstream effect on your, um, on your, uh, 
on your sex, on your ability to get pregnant. So, and to stay pregnant. And then the other component is it, it will eventually start to impact your sex hormones. So things like your progesterone and your estrogen and can start to mess with ovulation or that second half of the menstrual cycle that it's really important for it to be over 10 days. Uh, you know, that's called kind of the luteal defect, if you will, the luteal hormone defect when you don't have a long phase in the second half after your ovulation, because if it's shorter than seven days, it doesn't give the opportunity for the egg, egg to egg. implant. Or if the progesterone isn't high enough, then it can, you know, the it. implantation can happen and you're going to experience the kind of recurring pregnancy loss, if you will. So, you know, the big thing it's cortisol has a lot of downstream effects. And that's why I say sleep is this foundation because you basically just turn the knob down. We all have a lot of stress in our life. And I talk about how we need to learn how to draw boundaries with stress as opposed to think that there's a time in our life that we won't have stress. That's really the skill is learning how to draw boundaries. But sleep is one of those things. It's like pressing a reset button. And so if you don't have that reset button, you're constantly just turning up that dial more and more and more, and it makes you less resilient and it impacts your immune system. It impacts your ability to digest, you know, carbohydrate, carbohydrate proteins and fats, and you're going to crave more carbohydrates, which is going to dysregulate your blood sugars more. You're going to gain weight easier. And then now we're going to impact your sex hormones as well. So there's, there's a lot, there's a lot that, you know, that it will impact. So, um, let's say somebody comes to you says they've had i'm creating an example they've tried mm -hmm. for nine months to conceive it's not working um, and you do your intake with them and you ask them how they're sleeping and they're not doing well i'm not getting yeah. like let's say they get their five six hours of sleep um have a really hard time winding down at night um what would be something that you would recommend to them for sure so it's funny because if i can use even more of a generic is when people have been trying to conceive and they, they're not sleeping well, for the most part, they know they need to sleep better. So they really do try. Mm -hmm. um, I typically don't see somebody who's only sleeping five hours and they've been trying to conceive. And the thing that I actually use a lot to really keep an eye on my patient is the Aura Ring, mm -hmm. O-U-R-A, right? And that way they can't run from me. <laughs> <laughs> I find people really overestimate how much they sleep. And when I put this little ring on their finger and I get them to send me their information, they're almost embarrassed to send it. They're like, I don't want to send it because you were right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, because people will say, I think, no, I'm sleeping fine. I never had issues. Or if they do have issues, my big thing is always figuring out why. Mm -hmm. Why is their nervous system not allowing them to go into deep rest? What is stimulating their nervous system? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's external stresses like a project at work, a family fight, a relationship, whatever, something that is on your mind. But there is, we forget that there's a lot of physical things mm -hmm. that will also prevent us from being able to fall asleep. For example, environmental toxins. That's a huge one. Like it stimulates your nervous system, right? Especially if you're not draining, detoxifying properly. So you're not pooping on a regular basis. You're not drinking enough water. You're not sweating on a regular basis. Those toxins, which we all accumulate, that's just part of aging, if you will. That's one of the things that we need to prevent if you want to age is to decrease that load or how you get rid of those toxins. And really it's the combination of the two but it, it jacks up your nervous system. And then it, your body tries to process them and that needs nutrients. So now your B12 is depleted and now your iron is depleted. And so now you feel right anxious and overwhelmed. And it's just kind of this buzzing feeling. You're not going to be able to fall asleep. Right. And so it's learning a skill, but also setting yourself up for success. Meaning, are you eating the right foods? Are you eating at the right times? Is your gut working well? Are you drinking clean water? Are you going out for walks in nature? Are you doing some movement in the right time of the day, right? Are you exercising at 8 p.m. or at 8 a.m.? Um, so everyone I find is individualistic, mm -hmm. but it's really figuring out your why. Because when you know the why, 
then you are intentional with your actions. And then when you're tracking that data, right, using something like the aura ring, I know there's other ways that you can do that, then you're getting that feedback. Like I can't tell you how many of my patients stop drinking at nighttime because they would look at their heart rate when they drink and they were like, <laughs> yeah. oh my God, I didn't realize this is what it was doing. And I'm like, yeah, it's jacking up your heart rate. You think you're relaxing and it's actually decreasing your heart rate variability. Your temperature is elevated. Your heart rate is up and now you're not rested. And then you want to try to go exercise and push your body even more. And you just kind of get stuck in this, right? Fight or flight. And we have to teach you how to relax. And for everyone, it's going to be a little bit different in terms of what they find relaxing, but things that are going to be soothing to that parasympathetic uh, state. So whether it's meditation, whether it's being in the nature, playing with uh, your animals, connecting with your partner, uh, journaling, meditating, listening to music, whatever, everyone has a little bit of um, you know, their own kind of patterns that they get into, but it's just figuring out what it is that helps you. And then, you know, I'll use my big guns, I call them, like I'll use herbs and I'll use supplements to help switch the body into that state because we're so used to being in that fight mm -hmm. or flight. Once you switch it, it's like, it starts to crave it, right? You're like, oh, I just want to rest. I don't want to <laughs> go, go, go anymore. And I'm like, good. That's how I know I'm in the, you know, that's how I know I got you. <laughs> exactly. It's funny. I was just talking to a client the other day and they were like, you know what? I felt really, I had some energy the first few weeks we worked together because we did some yeah. vitamin adjustment and stuff. And then they're like, and now I'm just really, I'm really tired. I'm like, you know what? You actually are because you haven't slept in so long. Your body yeah, you haven't slept for a decade. <laughs> yeah, your body's exhausted. You just need that rest now. And then this, the signal is finally coming through, right? We're not riding on adrenaline anymore. Yes. Um, that's most I was going to say, it's adrenaline yeah. high and we're that... adrenaline junkies. We want cool. the dopamine yeah. hits <laughs> and it's so backwards to say. And I mean, so for fertility, you have to, the nervous system needs to feel soothed and relaxed. You have to switch into the creator role instead of the go, go, go. And that's when you, if you're thinking about Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine and the yin, the yin and the yang. The young is like the, where our society is mostly, it's right, this, this hustle cu culture of go and go out and do more stuff. And, but the truth is we need to rest and the rest is the yin balance. And we have a lot of imbalance in our society now. And the yin is the creator. That's the nurturer. That's the, you know, introspective, the slowing down and the, the, our inner guidance, if you will. And both males and females have those components, right? It's just about balancing. But when the female is getting ready to reproduce, she needs to snap more into that yin state and become in tune with that yin state. Because again, I'll tell you the people who struggle with infertility is they're typically CEOs or the high functioning females, they're athletes or nurses. Those are my top three mm -hmm. people in the medical care system. Nurses, because you are have crazy hours, you don't sleep well. Your circadian rhythm is probably you're, all over the place. <laughs> all over the place. You're eating hospital food a bunch of the times, like sure you'll bring your own, but you're under fluorescent lights and you're a giver you give every ounce of your energy out. So it's going to be really hard for you to learn how to stop giving that energy out and bringing some of it in. Athletes, generally depleted people because you're training hard. And even if you're eating well in this, like I used to be an athlete. And if there's any athletes listening to it, you know how important sleep is. But also know that being an athlete is a short-term part in your life. Like even you look at NBA players who retire at 39, like 39 is really old to retire as an <laughs> yeah. athlete, right? Just to tell you that like, it should be a short-lived thing. And if you're not going to be an NBA, NHL, whatever professional athlete, then I always recommend to like do it for a couple of years to fulfill whatever thing you feel like you're missing. But just know that that is a really depleting state. And the same with like high achieving CEOs, people who run company, like you have a lot of stress, you have a lot of responsibility. And so you're in that very big, yang role if you will you delegate your you know um a lot of to-do lists versus like nurturing yourself and slowing mm -hmm. down and resting and you know um because sleep is just a deep way to rest 
right? And we have such a hard time slowing down and doing that. And rebuilding, right? Like if we think about where growth occurs, Mm -hmm. it's overnight. And then if you think about if any of the listeners are moms and have been pregnant, the first few weeks, like if you think about what happens, you sleep 16 hours a day if you can. You're just exhausted. Oh, yeah. And it's just like your body's building, creating, right? And it just needs that sleep and that rest for that growth hormone to be made, excreted and create that human, right? And if we then don't sleep, like we're sabotaging on the wrong end. Yep, Um, for sure. And that typically is what happens when I see females who um, work really hard to not even to get pregnant, but they're like, they work really hard and then, I just had a patient who got pregnant and she actually didn't expect it because they struggled with infertility the first time. And so it was like, they didn't even really try, which is really great news. But one of her first symptoms is she's really tired and she'll sleep like on the weekend, she'll have naps for like three hours a day. And I'm like, good, (laughs) something has to shut you off, (laughs) right? Like our, our body is really smart and our babies will teach us way before they even come out of what it is that we need. Uh, And, you know, that, that sleep and that regeneration, it's to me, like I, so I always talk about health, like as a house, right? You're building a house. The first thing you need is a foundation Mm -hmm. and then you need good building materials and then you need, you know, good ventilation, that kind of stuff. But the foundation is actually your sleep and the good building materials like brick and wood is your nutrition Mm -hmm. and your digestion. And then, you know, ventilation and all those things that's like exercise. And I just try to make it simple, but that foundation, like if you don't have a foundation, you're trying to build that on sand. It doesn't matter how good the building materials are. You're always going to have rocky, right? It's always going to be an unstable house, if you will. So getting that sleep in order. And like we said at the beginning of the podcast, then that skill you can transfer to your kids, right? Absolutely. And so you were kind of touching on that earlier when you were talking about cortisol and how cortisol can be all over the place and there can be reasons why that happens. So when one thing you kind of touched on was gut you yep. mentioned environmental toxins. Um, what are other things that you see that, um, yeah, mess with people's cortisol and thus mess with people's sleep? Yeah, for sure. So um, I don't, I think adrenal fatigue is a really big thing that people will talk about. And uh, it's actually like your adrenals, like it's not a real thing. If you're a practitioner listening to this, I hope you know that by now and you're not talking to people and telling them about adrenal fatigue because your adrenals don't just stop producing cortisol at the age of 30. Okay. Like that just, there's no, there's, unless there's like a genetic or something, whatever, most people, that is not the case. And if you're like, I am the 1%, it's like, no, you're not. Likely not. <laughs> you will yeah. know. Yeah. Likely not. You will know if you're the 1%, but the, with cortisol, it's kind of like, I don't want to say this deep rabbit hole, but you start to look at what, what produces cortisol? And then, okay, we look at the mitochondria. Oh, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. So what does, that's the thing that produces energy, but it's also the battleship. So it also fights off infections and toxins. And unfortunately it's like a teeter totter. If it's in battleship mode, it can't be in powerhouse mode. And so an example is think about the first thing that happens to you when you get sick your energy drops, right? You get tired and you start to sleep more because the body's trying to recover and fight off that infection. Um, And what we're seeing in our environment now is basically like, I'll say that there is tests that show us what's happening and tests that tell us why things are happening. So the gut, like I'll run a lot of gut analysis, stool analysis, and we'll see that there's a lot of overgrowth of bad bacteria, not enough of good bacteria. There's a lot of uh, indigestion of food and like actual food particles in the stool. There's a, a indigestion of fat and then inflammation in the gut. You're just, and then like H. pylori, parasites, viruses, like there's all kinds of stuff now that we're seeing. And it's important to do that. But then you're asking the deeper question is like, why are all these things happening? Right. And again, it's coming down to a single function of the cell. So like the core of the cell is mitochondria. It's supposed to produce energy for us. And if it's bombarded with 
viruses, bacteria, environmental toxins that we don't even really think about. I always give the example of like Aaron Brockovich. Everybody, most people mm -hmm. have seen Aaron Brockovich and they saw the impact that it made. And so this is kind of what's happening in our environment now. It's just on a much slower stream, but it's just having this observation to be like, hmm, it's interesting that all of our food have all of these chemicals in it now and all of these kids are developing ADHD, right? It's connecting these dots to be like, well, why are all these kids all of a sudden not able to control their immune, uh, their nervous systems and not able to control it? And you you kind of dig dig this hole down and then, oh, and then we're all tired and oh, we can't lose weight. So that's, that's the rabbit hole, if you will, if I <laughs> took you on, but- the mitochondria is really what I focus on and how it relates to infertility is like, well, ovaries and the sperm are filled with mitochondria. Like that's that, you know, and that's our DNA and all this DNA fragmentation now that we're seeing in the sperm, it's really malfunctioning mitochondria. And you can take CoQ10 to support that. But the question is, why is it low? And so this is where we get into the environmental toxins and gut function and viruses and just cleaning those things up and teaching you about what's really in your environment. Um, so then the body can just restore its function. That's all really we're doing, right? Is restoring function to what it used to be. Even when you're talking about sleep, we used to go to bed with the sun and wake up with the sun. We now have the sun in front of our eyes. <laughs> or above our heads. All, or yeah. above our heads all day long. And yeah. it's not the sunlight, right? It's weird light that's causing our cortisol response to be higher. That's why it's important to go outside and to get away from the screen. That's why, you know, I wear my blue light blocking glasses most of the time to help decrease some of that stress that we have on the system. So we can do the thing that our body is meant to do, right? Because like we slept in the caves just fine. And we didn't need tracking devices back then, but we live in a very different world. And so we need to adapt to that world. And I think a lot of us just, if you're not in the health field, like if you're in finance or you're a lawyer or whatever, then you're not staying up to date and you're not really realizing that your environment has changed very, very drastically over the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. And that is what is actually contributing to a bunch of your health issues, including things like fertility. Absolutely. Can I go back quickly on, I don't mm -hmm. want to go down the whole rabbit hole, <laughs> like ADHD and other things, but is the assumption correct that by what you're doing, um, as an example, cleaning out H. pylori parasites, candida, whatever might be there, yep. um, is that also setting the body up for a healthier pregnancy in terms of what am I as a mom in utero, giving yep. to my child and making that absolutely. a better journey for the child. Yep, absolutely. One of the reasons that I stepped into the fertility space is because I got really tired of seeing sick kids. If I see a three-year-old or a five-year-old with toxicities, like, I mean, you know, plastics and like BPAs, BPAs. and phthalates and um, heavy metals, and those levels are so high in a child that's three or five years old. They haven't been on the planet for long enough to be able to accumulate that much. Mm -hmm. But then we see studies of what chemicals and toxins are showing up in the placenta. And it's impacting the nervous system of a tiny little human way more than somebody who's grown because the, again, the immune system is just developing. Uh, the nervous system is just developing how to fire properly. And if you have all these chemicals and toxins that are preventing it, that are depleting you of nutrients, things like B vitamins that are important for methylation, which is going to help the actual proper function of the nervous system. But then they're actually preventing the normal firing of the system. Like people will say, oh, my child is just so angry, right? or they're agitated, they can't control their moods, they can't control because they don't, they, their nervous system is jacked up. And what do you do? You clean out the gut, you detox them. But if I detox the parents, because it's in our tissue, that's what most of us don't get. And that's, there's no perfect test that's going to tell you exactly all. It's not a matter of if you're toxic, if we are all toxic, but it's just creating an environment that allows you to thrive. So understanding 
how much toxicity are you really exposing yourself to and how much is it impacting you? Because once you start to see that, like one of the things that my patients will say, I, I use a bathtub analogy is the water coming through in the shower is like your environment, but then that water sits in the bathtub and then the sewer has to get it out. So it depends on how well the drainage works and how well the sewer works to get that out. And if those things are not working well, even if you clean up the environment, it's going to take a really long time for you to notice. So we have to you know, implement some techniques to improve that gut function to improve because you're absolutely right. You're passing those things on to your kids. And again, it's a skill. So you're learning a skill yourself so you can notice it in your kids. When my kids are agitated, I go back to what did they eat? What did they feed them there? What can I give them to help their system go through whatever it is that they're trying to go through versus just thinking they have behavioral issues, right? Which, I mean, toddlers are going to be, kids are going to, they're just tiny little humans trying to figure out. Somewhere but if you don't else. know how <laughs> your own system, yeah, if you don't know how your own system works, there's no way, there's no way you're going to be able to help your child do that either. And like I said, the best thing that you can do is make sure you're the, the cleanest, the best possible vessel, both you and your partner before you step into this journey. So you can really live out the vision that you have of the perfect family, right? That you're dreaming of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, we dream about this beautiful family and then nobody's sick and we're on the beach and we're doing this stuff. But in reality, you know, I like when I had parents come with their kids and they're just like, I just didn't think it would be this hard. Like I just, you, cause you see glimpses of people, right? You see them on the vacation and you're like, look how happy they are. And you have this desire to connect and build something on yourself, but you don't realize what it's actually going to take. And what I'm saying is it's like, well, if you get your stuff in order, then, then you can enjoy that. But you have to keep your finger on the pulse, right? You have to still check in and make sure, like it takes a lot of work right now in the world that we live in to stay healthy. And I hope that changes, but I'm not sure when it will in the way that it will change is us talking about it, advocating, teaching people and helping them figure their health out. So they're, no, they're not coming to the doctor and feeling tired and overweight and constipated and being told that your blood work looks normal. It's like, I don't care if it looks normal. I don't feel normal. So tell me what else I need to test, right? Exactly. Absolutely. And that's exactly what we see all the time too. People go to the doctor, I, I can't sleep. Yeah, you're stressed. I don't maybe take some I know I'm stressed. <laughs> yes. It's like, thank that you for the update. <laughs> yeah, I still need to sleep, right? And so if the tools don't work potentially, like yes. I'm learning to meditate, I'm doing yoga, I'm going to Tai Chi, I'm starting to yes. set boundaries, but that's still not working. There is an underlying reason or a multiple, like yep. you were talking about, and something is jacking up that cortisol. So we have to get to the root of that and address that and then yep. work our way. And I think what you said just with the parents and creating that vision and that journey is once and from personal experience, having had two burnouts um, and having yep. a special needs child and um, it's, it's tools. And once you learn that, and those tools can be your journaling, meditation, whatnot, but they're also your nutrition, your building blocks, your, right, all these little things um, yep. add up to a puzzle and your little um, bag kind of that you carry with you that you know when to pull what out of that box. Yes. Um, that does that mean life is easier? Not necessarily. You can just handle things that get thrown at you better. For sure. I find because you can't yep. ditch all the time. You can't get away from them, but you can learn that yep. resiliency through stabilizing your body, I think, physically with all sure. the things that you've talked about, plus the mental, um, psychological part of it to then actually be able to create that and hold that space for kids and help them yep. calm and grow and thrive and be resilient and be tough and do hard things. You know, what came to mind for me when you said is like being overweight is hard. Going to the gym is hard too. So choose yeah. your hard. Yeah. And it's not to say I know a ton of women who are in, that go to the gym and still don't lose weight. The point being is if you're doing something and the message is not like the circuit is broken, so the message is not commuting, that's not your 
cue to give up. That's actually your cue to ask for more help. Mm -hmm. And I always say we are not asking for the wrong thing. We're asking the wrong people. So if you're going to your medical doctor who's also overweight, has bags under their eyes and is tired and you're like, how do I get healthy, doc? It's like, well, that's the wrong person because they're not specializing in health. They're specializing in disease care. They know what pharmaceutical to prescribe. They know what to do in an acute illness situation. Like if there is a, a crazy infection going on or you need surgery or whatever, urgent care. Our medical care system is the best at doing that. Chronic disease, we have very, very little things that they can do. And in fact, that's the 90% of issues that are burdening our healthcare system. And those are the things that can be fixed with lifestyle. That's your diet, that's your exercise routine, that's your sleep routine. And I think that we give up too quickly. We give up on ourselves too quickly because it's easier to say, oh, it's just the way that I am, as opposed to something is off here and I wanna see what's possible. And to your point of like, Life is never easy. It's not supposed to be easy. If it was really easy, you would get bored, <laughs> right? And that's usually there's stagnation and depression. And so I think this dream of it being easy, it's like, well, it's not about that. I think you can create moments of ease for yourself and thus learning boundaries, but it also feels really good to work hard at something and mm -hmm. achieve something, right? And so whether that's health, whether that's a professional goal, a relationship goal, right? A health goal, whatever it is, or building a family. Like we have two kids and I'm working very hard on building that family right now. There's a lot of energy that goes into, uh, you know, making sure that my kids are set up for what I believe will be a great future for them. Do I know what it's going to look like? No idea because anything can happen at any time. <laughs> but I think we need to stop looking for this easy thing mm -hmm. because that's not like anything that comes easy. I was never worth it. You know, it's the thing that's hard is the thing that you need to do and seek professionals like yourself, like myself, who are going to help you go through that and who specialize in health as opposed to who specialize in giving pharmaceuticals. And that's just the reality of the situation. I'm not, you know, I'm not bashing one or the other. It's just like understanding what is it that you're, you need mm -hmm. and then go to the right person. I don't go to my mechanic for accounting purposes. I go to my mechanic to fix my car. I go to my account. And that's the same with your doctor. We got to stop going to the doctor and being like, hey, doc, I want to get healthier. They just, you know, literally not, not in their field. And a lot of the times now, especially they're overworked, understaffed. They have thousands of patients. They can't keep track of anything. So you have to learn how to advocate for yourself and you have to learn how to, um, you know, take care of yourself because it's, I think that should be our own responsibility always. I don't think anybody is responsible, right, for your own health, but you. And so it's just taking that responsibility and saying, I'm going to do it. Uh, and having kids is just that next level of responsibility because now you're responsible for somebody else, right? It's a lot of work. Absolutely. But that was so, I totally 100% agree with what you said. It was so beautifully phrased, I think. Um, so, and I think fertility is, but I think fertility is a great motivator to say, yes. you know, I'm going to now yes. get that in order um, yes. to reach that goal. Yep. Um, and my fertility patients are like some of the most motivated people, right? It's just a matter of like, um, if it, not even like if the message aligns for them and if the belief aligns for them, because then if you have that trust, you're going to do anything that the practitioner says, Absolutely. right? So you just want to make sure that you build that trustworthy relationship. But the most motivated people, they'll, they'll literally implement, like when I run labs, within three days, they'll have them done. Like they, they just got them yesterday and they're already sending them off versus, you know, oh, it's two weeks and like, hey, you need to get your labs done. You need to get your labs done. So it's, uh, you're absolutely right. It's that really great motivator. So if people, um, cause I know you have another um, patient to see in a minute. Um, but if people want to get on that fertility journey or are struggling right now, um, or yeah. are struggling with maybe, I think even postpartum is something that you can, yes. um, assist. how can people work with you? What are ways to, to do that? Yep. 
Yeah. So, I mean, the the best first step is really to just follow me on social media. I'm at Dr. Jane Levesque. I'm on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. And I actually have a free Facebook group that's called uh, Dr. Jane's Natural Fertility Support Group. And I share a lot. That's really kind of a community that I started uh, not too long ago to just build support around how you can support yourself naturally through fertility and what does that actually look like in educating people around what your menstrual cycle should look like? How much should you sleep? How much, uh, you know, how much should you eat and what kind of foods? And then uh, from there, I have a fertility one-on-one program and that's really for anybody who is thinking about getting pregnant in the next three to 12 months. I summarize all of the things, kind of just crush that information overwhelm around what are the foods that both you and your partner need to eat to optimize the quality of the egg and the sperm? What are, and, you know, kind of eating with your menstrual cycle, if you will, what are some labs that you should consider running before getting pregnant? So you could see what nutrients are missing. We were talking about that off camera, but if I see somebody who's really low in B vitamins, mm -hmm. uh, I know they're going to be really tired through the first trimester. If they're really low on B6, I know they're going to probably be super nauseous. And so there's things that we can actually see that will predict or things like vitamin D, having low vitamin D, it there's like a 60% chance that your child will develop autism because you have lower vitamin D levels. The same with probiotics, having things like eczema and asthma. There, it, there's just simple tests that you can run and get your doctor to run uh, to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success and environmental toxins, that kind of stuff. So that program is you do it on your own. It's very much, uh, you know, self-paced, crushes the information overwhelming, helps you get prepared for pregnancy. So you feel more confident and in control of that fertility journey. If you've already started trying and you're struggling or you have really regular periods, painful periods, you've maybe had some miscarriages, maybe uh, just one, maybe four, like it really depends on where you are, then I usually recommend to, to do a little bit more personalized care, if you will, and you need some lab testing and working with me one-on-one. -on -one. And again, that's really just get in touch with me and uh, we'll just do a discovery call and see if I'm the right person to help. And I'll point you in the right direction if I'm not. And if I am, I'll tell you what those, what that process looks like. Awesome. And we will drop all your social links and everything in the show notes so people can reach you. Um, thank you so much. No, my pleasure. Thank you. This was great. This is <laughs> awesome. I love that there's um, people like you out there where we're on the same, exactly on the same page where we know yep. that um, there is so much help out there. It's yeah. just like you said, go find the right people who mm -hmm. address the actual problem that you have. Yeah. Um, and I find with that, it's really about intention. Because sometimes when we tell ourselves, that's the way that I am, I don't have a problem that can be fixed, then right away you close yourself off. And I, right, like you're just wearing blinders and you can't even see the things that are around you. As opposed to you're like, I wonder if there is a solution to this. I wonder if, because once you start searching, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. That's something that my naturopath told me when I met him. And I went through four different naturopaths before I found the one that really shifted me in a way that, you know, has not only allowed me to heal my anxiety and IBS and all these issues that I thought were chronic and I had to live with, but it's. The point to that is if you're looking, then you're much more likely to see versus if you shut it off, then you're not going to be able to see anything. And if you had one bad experience, that doesn't mean that that's it and that's not for you. That generally means that just wasn't the right person and you need to keep looking because there is somebody you just won't even know if they're the right person or not until you try, right? And it's like, it's okay if you go through some practitioners and they don't really help you, that's that's just the nature of the game. You know, you're never going to find that perfect teacher from day one. Day one. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Where from personal experience, I would totally agree with that. Awesome. Great. Dr. Jane, thank you so much. Thank you, Aninka. I had such a great time. Uh, yeah. Thank you for having me on here. And I think it's fantastic that you are working with people on the foundation of the thing <laughs> that is literally going to set them up for every other area in their life. And sleep truly is 
something that's uh, very underrated. And I think when people say, I'll sleep when I'm dead, it's like, well, you're actually going to die a lot sooner. Yes. <laughs> so uh, it's up to you, but I would recommend that you do the whole sleep thing because you'll feel much better. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Check out Dr. Jane's info below and uh, we'll see you next time.